So, my name is Suzanne Jeffrey, and I am uh, Vice Chair of the Campaign Against Climate Change, and I'm also Chair of the Campaign Against Climate Change Trade Union Group. Um, in the Trade Union Group of the Campaign Against Climate Change, we work together to produce um, this pamphlet here, One Million Climate Jobs. Would you do me the biggest of favours, and if you have heard of this, even better if you've read it, could you sit your hand up, please? Um, very, very heartening um, that, that so many people do, do put their hands up. And I'd like to say thanks very much, by the way, to North London People's Assembly for inviting me um, to come and speak today. I'll talk a little bit more about a million climate jobs as part of the alternative um, uh, slightly later on. But I just want to start really by talking about the um, environmental climate change crisis that, that we face. Because I think that there are um, lots and lots and lots of parallels with the question of the environmental crisis and the climate change crisis with the economic crisis that, that, we, that we face. And um, first of all, I think one of the most obvious and most striking parallels with the two crises is the way that those in power um, seek to deny what is, what is happening until it's absolutely too late. Um, and that's exactly what's happening in terms of the climate change crisis, it's what's happened in terms of the environmental crisis. All of the crazy derivatives, all of the greed that was dominating the stock exchange, when people pointed out to them that this was a problem, that this is a bubble that was going to burst, that the consequences of that bubble bursting would be millions and billions of people around the world, ordinary people around the world would face um, massive problems in their everyday life. Um, they just denied that it was a problem. No, no, it'll last forever. This is, I mean, what did Gordon Brown used to describe it as, you know, the end of boom and bust. There is no, there is no bust anymore. Um, all of those kind of problems. And that's exactly what's happened around the question of climate change. Over and over again, um, scientists, activists have argued, have pointed out, who've written reports identifying what we are facing, the level of the problem that we are facing. And we are facing the same response from those in power, from those in authority, is to deny that there is anything, anything problematic going on, anything really uh, that could cause us any kind of catastrophe whatsoever. We've only just recently had the publication of the IPCC report. And to, to see the news coverage of that report was to be, was to be living in a, a different universe. It was to be living in a different world. That was the report that was pointing out that we are on track for serious and catastrophic climate change. And yet, all of the news reports, and not the news reports that I saw, tended to focus on the fact that the IPCC admitted that they had made some mistakes, some errors in previous reports. The errors that they made in previous reports did not affect the overall understanding that was being expressed about the, the situation that we were in. It was an acceptance that errors have been made, but all of the news reports focused on that. In terms of the government, you'd hardly know that that report, you would not know that that report had um, had been produced very, very recently. So they deny that one of the powers is they deny that there is a they deny that there is a there is a problem. Um, the second parallel I would say is that um, they don't act to do anything about the problem. So in terms of the environmental crisis, uh, economic crisis, sorry, what they're doing, they're doing exactly the same things that they were doing that led to the crisis in the first place. Exactly the same things. When it comes to the environmental crisis, what are they doing? Are they, are they, are they organising to make sure that we do decarbonise our economy, that we deal with the uh, massive rise in emissions that are, that are causing the problem in the first place? Caused by the use of largely fossil fuels and, 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 and land change. No, they're not doing that at all. In fact, they're driving even faster, um, if that's possible, down, down that route. Um, I mean, we've got this absolutely outrageous situation taking place where around the energy crisis that we're facing at the moment, we have those in, in, in authority telling us that the energy crisis that we're facing at the moment, the rise in energy prices that will yet again this year mean the death of, 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 of thousands of, of poor pensioners and poor people. They're now trying to blame the rise in energy prices on climate change. And climate change um, alarmism is the expression that we smart used last week. Can't climate change alarmism is what is driving up our energy prices. Climate change alarmism is, is what is meaning that we're, we're, we're subsidising um, energy and, and the taxpayers are paying for this. I mean, this is just 
quite incredible. The real subsidies are not going to deal with, the, with, with, with any of the problems of climate change. Um, the last budget last year, which really sort of set up the energy policy of, of, of this government, included in it subsidies which we're not hearing about whatsoever. 3.2 billion was subsidised on the oil and coal and gas, in, 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 sorry, on the oil and gas industry for deep sea exploration off the coast of the UK. The subsidies that they will be factoring in for the fracking uh, uh, um, industry will be enormous. And whilst they're talking about subsidies, by the way, um, last week it was announced, I know, I know there's debates about this in terms of the environmental movement, but for, my, for myself I'm very, very clear, I don't think nuclear power is a, is a, a, genuine, a genuine renewable um, energy, so it's a waste of money and it's incredibly dangerous as well. But when we're talking about subsidies, that's where the subsidies went. They have, they have guaranteed that we are buying energy at twice the, the market rate in order to ensure that there was a, 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 nuclear, a nuclear industry in this country. So they don't, stop, they don't even act to solve the problem. Instead, they act to drive exactly the same policies, exactly the same strategy that have led us to this place, uh, this situation in the, in the first place. Um, meanwhile, just to very quickly go back to the depth of the problem that we are in, it is an extremely serious, extremely serious um, uh, problem. It, the way that they are taking us is that we, are, we, we will continue down the road, um, although alternatives are there that, that uh, it's got us to this uh, situation in the first place. James Hansen points out, he says here, four degrees of warming would be enough to melt all the ice. You would have a tremendously chaotic situation as you moved away from our current climate towards another one. That's a different planet. You wouldn't recognise it. We're on the verge of creating climate chaos if we don't begin to reduce emissions rapidly. One of the other things they do which parallels the economic crisis is to blame the wrong people. So who's been blamed at this moment in time for the problems that we're in? Uh, energy, uh, subsidies uh, for, for renewable energy uh, are, are being blamed. The Daily Mail, unbelievably, always tries to blame wind farms. You know, if you put into the Daily Mail search engine, if you put any kind of progressive ideas in whatsoever, you will see the Daily Mail search engine churn out the most obscene reactionary nonsense. This, you probably can't see it, but it's incredible. Um, this is the Daily Mail's line on wind farms. Wind farms can actually increase climate change. I kid you not, this is what it says, by raising temperatures and causing downpours for warm academics. I mean, then you read the article, there, you just, there is no academic saying that whatsoever. I mean, it's just utter, utter nonsense, but that's the kind of thing that has been put out. I want to try and finish up on, 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 on this. Um, we do have a problem. It is possible to solve that, that, that problem. But it is a problem, as our previous speaker just talked about, of production. When people sit on the bus, um, they don't sit there they praying, you know, I want this bus to be working on fossil fuels. If it's not on petrol, I'm getting off that bus now. I just don't want anything to do with it. When you get on a, when you put your electricity on, you're not saying, oh, please let this electricity come from coal. If it's not coming from coal, I'm switching my lights off. That's not what it's about. Ordinary people do want to see planet that we can live on, that is safe for ourselves and, and, the future, and, and the future generations, but it's not about future generations by the way, it's about our generation, it's about us who live here now. And all of you want to see that, but in order to achieve that, we really do have to look at how we produce uh, in our society, and who has control over that production. The big six energy companies are not in this for our, us for looking after us or for saving the planet. The big six energy companies are in this to make massive, massive profits which will line their own pockets. We've got to get to grips with this question. One million climate jobs is a contribution to that. It's a small but it's a significant contribution to this. But one of the things I also think that we have to crack, and I really welcomed it, um, is the idea that there isn't an alternative. I really, really welcome Russell Brand on Newsnight um, the other day. And if you look at the comments that have come back at Russell Brand, uh, the negative comments that have come back from the commentators, the thing they keep picking up on all the time is how dare he have the temerity to say that it is actually possible to have an alternative to the way the existing uh, situation, the existing setup at this moment in time is. 
I think we have to keep banging on about the alternative. We must not let them get away with obscuring the current debate and blaming the wrong people or pretending that there isn't a problem. I would urge you to buy, read, sell, one million climate jobs. Thank you very much for inviting me onto the platform today.